Hello everyone, welcome back to my Let's Replay channel. This is Andrew T. Once again, coming at you, and I'm going to do my reviews of Robin Hood: Conquest of the Longbow and Star Wars: Republic Commando. Now, I just beat Conquest of the Longbow today. Uh, after I did my video, just went through it. Remember most of the stuff, and the only other stuff you really need is the manual that you can look up online. Because back then, there's a thing called copy protection that because the internet wasn't around that unless you actually had the physical manual you couldn't really go through parts of the game without it. You could do the beginning part but in the middle you need the manual just to get past certain sections. And they did it pretty well in the game but um, looking back on it is more tedious than anything. But um, either way it's still a great nostalgic uh, pickup. Old Sierra game. It is Sierra. You know Ken Williams should have been the uh, the hint there, but it was very nostalgic. The writing was very good for its time. It still holds up pretty well. The adult humor, though, is what really got me when I first played this. Because it's Robin Hood uh, in The Legend of It. They were doing actually more justice than a lot of the, the uh, media out there did. You know, no American playing Robin Hood. Uh, no spoofs like Mel Brooks. No Australian playing him like Russell Crowe recently, you know, and all these other. No, it was just the Legend of Robin Hood of okay, this these are the facts. This is what's going to happen. We're going to make an adult and uh, going to add a little bit of mysticism to it, but not enough that you think it's a fantasy, you know, fantasy setting. But some of the some of the jokes they had in this game, <laughs> some of the stuff. It was just literally, I don't know how they got past the censors or how they got past, you know, the quality control of, oh, yeah, this is good for a Sierra game. I mean, before we did, you know, uh, King's Quest and, you know, Space Quest. And Space Quest is kind of quirky, but not really dirty. But this one had some, some dirty jokes in it, and it had adult content and language for the first time in the Sierra game that I, I can remember. Now, everyone thinks Sierra now is like, oh, you know, they came out of fear. That's a... First person shooter with tons of foul language, blood, guts, and gore. But before this game, there really wasn't a whole lot of that. The only other game that really was back then for like the DOS era was Leash Suit Larry. That was kind of like, oh, I can actually pick this up as adult humor in situations. But for this one, for an adventure game to be have the Sierra license to be and uh, to be innocent enough in the jokes. And then have the, all the inside jokes in there without having it to be, you know, if your kids were playing it, your parents explained it to you. Because they were so tongue-in-cheek that if you're young enough, you don't really get it anyway. But looking back at it, I was just like, well, I know that's a, that's a bad word. You know, that's a bad word. But not that bad a word. I just knew I couldn't say them at, at that age. You know, like, get damn in hell. So, <laughs> and that was, in the, that was in the intro. That was in the intro song. You know, they used those two words at the very last line. I'm like... Oh, this game's different. Then they had the uh, overtones of uh, Robin Hood and Minbirian's, you know, sexual re relationship. You know, they lie down in, in the Willow Grove and get do to it. And then at the very end cutscene, you know, see them in the cave, you know, uh, their backs anyway, them leaning against each other. And, you know, it's implied what they're doing, but they didn't have to be overly, you know, uh, shove it down your throat in order to kind of get the point across. And they did it well. In, Mostly because I think the limitations of the medium back then, but other times it's because, hey, they looked like they were just having fun programming this entertaining story into this game. So, the only, like I said, for a pickup now, I'd probably have to give it about a 6 out of 10. It's above average. It's not bad. It's not a bad game. For the price, it was very, very good. I got my, you know, a couple hours of entertainment out of it. About... Two, three hours if you go through it all, like the whole thing, and try to do every death and, you know, get all the little Easter eggs from talking to people at the fair. Um, but uh, the graphics, like I said, they're DOS, so they're not updated. There's no voice acting, which is great. Uh, for for this time, yeah, for this time, you didn't need voice acting for this game, which I was really glad not to have. Um, let's see. Yeah, it holds up pretty well. But uh, for the, from the money, it's a good buy. But it's not something that I would say, oh, go out and definitely get this. You know, it's definitely worth the, the three hours for, you know, a couple bucks worth of 
uh, worth of your time. Like, you're the, there's other stuff you get, get out there and buy that's probably equal to it, but unless you're really into the whole nostalgia thing or the old adventure games or you want to see some of the in-jokes and writing from the old Sierra days, you know, it's it's some of the mini-games were freaking hard, too. The Nine Man Morris game, I remembered I only had to restore once on playing that game. It's a board game that they, they had to play in order to uh, get past a certain section of the game. And I remember back, oh my gosh, it was so hard back when we first had this game. Because you have to get three stones in a line and then you take someone else's stone. By then, if someone takes your stone first, there's nothing you do. Because they, they, they basically can move the stones around the board um, they can only move one at a time, and it's just look it up if you want to play it. But it's it's it was so frustrating that um, at times we had to put the difficulty all the way to the bottom, which basically means that you pass all the mini games no matter what. But I put mine like even just one up from the bottom, and it was still freaking difficult because there's really no way to get any um, any worse than uh, the mo the most difficult thing. You okay over there, Dallas? All right. Dog just woke up. Anyway, um, yeah, I would give it a six out of ten. It's above average, even to this day. Uh, good pickup if you if you're interested in the genre, but not something I'd say go out and get right now. So uh, that kind of sums up Conquest of the Longbow. Next, Republic Commando. Uh, I was kind of blinded by the nostalgia glasses in this one as well. I remember playing it at first and just enjoying the crap out of it, but it's because of some of the stuff they had on there was kind of groundbreaking at the time. The squad-based um, tactics that you have for that were really, really well done. Uh, the the gameplay was pretty good. The thing I didn't like, though, that I forgot totally about was the shooting aspect of at the beginning. There's other... You have one gun the entire game, and you can add attachments to the gun, so that way, once you get the sniper attachment, that's all I use throughout the entire game. Because you can actually look down the sights and actually pinpoint an area or uh, a person that you want to, want to shoot. But whenever you start off the game, your reticle is like this big. Hold on, in the screen. This big in the screen. So it's really hard to aim at someone more than 10 feet away and hit them with every shot unless you're right up on them. So, and that I was kind of annoyed, but in the beginning they were just trying to hold your hand anyway and get you through the tutorial. So I enjoyed it in that in that sense, in that um, if I went on with it, I'd probably, you know, get over it, but that's just one of the things. And uh, I, I thought, like I said, for a squad-based uh, shooter for this universe it was the best prequel game out there it was being off the second prequel uh, attack of the clones where pretty much the best part of the movie happened at the end when the battle happened so these lucky right in there and you go, just go from there and you're going through the whole universe attacking you know uh, doing missions kind of getting behind the scenes and it it worked at the time it was very well done uh, got a little bit more of the Star Wars universe out of it but and the characters were very well rounded for your squad too. So everyone had, even though they're all clones, you have their distinct personalities uh, and some and voices too. So you're not just all one voice actor doing the whole thing. But I was very impressed at the time, and now now for what you're getting at for about two to three bucks, I'd say it's definitely worth a pickup if you're looking for a good squad based shooter. Um, that the AI is just not blatantly stupid for you know actually. And can actually hold its own and you know attack uh, the enemies that are in front of you. But other than that, though, um, yeah, I, I definitely had the nostalgia blinders on a little bit on this one. So without playing through the whole thing again and giving you a in depth, I'd say for my beginning impressions, I'd probably give it a seven, just because the price is so low. Uh, seven out of ten on that. Just like I said, this is only my opinion on my scores. Um, if I if I chose to, I'd rather not score it, but I have to quantify it some way on how I feel about the game because these are replays. These are not you know AAA titles or new titles coming out most of the time. Um, that for the replays that I do, that for this one, I have to give it a seven just because for the price and if you're looking for a nice first-person shooter squad base in the Star Wars universe, there's no other there's no other game. That's it. Like. All the other first-person shooters you have, like uh, 
gosh, well, the Shadows of the Empire, that was a bad one. Uh, <laughs> um, was it Rebel Assault? Gosh. There's 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 a lot of first person shooter Star Wars out there, um, Star Wars games out there, but um, Dark Forces that was the, that was the first good one, but that was so old that the graphics don't hold up to this day. But either way, like I said, it's it's a decent game. Uh, I definitely recommend picking it up for just the price with a made of fourth price on it. If it was a regular price, I'd be like, eh, maybe not, but it's gonna be on sale again, you know, sometime within the year. Either if not on GOG, then then on Steam or somewhere. Or what other platform you use to to pick up your games, but yeah, um, so yeah, I'd have to give six to the Robin Hood and seven to Republic Commando. Both I enjoy. I enjoyed beating Robin Hood again, even if it was only a couple hours. I'm, pro I'm gonna enjoy being Star Wars Republic Commando again just to get through it, uh, just because I was enjoying myself right before I ended. But I, because there's so much stuff that has to happen in the game so much information come at you I didn't have really a whole lot of time to commentate because in the in the first section they really are throwing a ton of info at you and you kind of need to hear it but anyway thank y'all so much for watching my videos this is Andrew T once again coming at you and y'all have a good one